It's the return of Grunwald. If you remember the 90s, um, and uh, you've been nice enough to listen to me through the years, uh, I was on The Loop and AM1000 and a couple other places. And a man named Grunwald, who worked with me briefly in Minneapolis, uh, was on the air with me here in Chicago on The Loop in, in those days. And then uh, I moved him to Detroit, where he produced there. And he was always on the air, because he's always funny. And he's since become quite the radio star in Detroit. His second piece of his life is working for the man you're going to meet next hour and working with him. And uh, that's Genesee, Michigan County Sheriff uh, Chris Swanson. But Grunwald, how long has it been? It's a you ever been you ever been in a yeah, studio? I, I, you know, First Steve, time in a studio? I know you're lazy, but I figured you would turn my microphone on Not for me. Uh, it's been a long time. You know, you and I've been all over the country. You've that's been true. fired from so we many actually, different jobs. We actually lived together. Yes, we did. Yeah. Oh, was this like an odd couple thing? Well, kind of. Kind yeah. of. We I, lived I together would... in Nov in Novi, Michigan, a yeah. fake town that was uh, manufactured. I who would... was the Oscar and who was the Felix? I cleaned up. I did everything. Whoa. Steve would lay his clothes all over the floor. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes that bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when I... we lived in Detroit, Steve couldn't wait. On Fridays at 10 a.m., there was a car racing back to Chicago. Oh, well, he committed for a year because uh, the guy that we worked for there initially at a radio station called, what was it, Q95? At yes. Because uh, Detroit's a great city. It's a great city. The people there are great. And the burbs are great. But uh, we worked for a guy um, who had an addiction issue, mm. which should have been a flag. Multiple addictions. Yes. And a general manager who, I believe, cried at his desk. Yes. Didn't he? Was that part of his day? Mm -hmm. So I can't believe that didn't go well. So, yeah, I commuted because I wasn't sure it was going to work out. And gosh darn it, looked out, I was right. But at the end of that year, when I was fired, that's one of ten, it's hard to remember them all. Uh, when I was fired and I came back here, you stayed. You know, there's no border guards in Michigan. You no. could have left. You know what, I, I, I love a lot of other cities in America, and I feel Chicago is one of the greatest cities I've, mm -hmm. I've ever lived in. Mm -hmm. But I love the people in Michigan, and I have so many close friends there no that... No reason not to. That's your home. I, I, I didn't want to leave. And you met a girl and you married her? Yeah. What'd she do? She uh, works for the Cintas Corporation. She that manages about... people? Yeah. Manages about 175 people, so she's smart. She's got a real job. And she does Makes more job. money than yes. I do. I've not met her like I haven't met Ben, the fake boyfriend of uh, Miranda. Well, so. maybe we can all have a get-together. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's who Ben is texting at like 5 o'clock in the morning. Whoa, uh, what? <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> um, and uh, let's get a plug-in for your own show. What station are you on? I am on uh, 99.5 WYCD in Detroit. It's a country station. Okay, what's the name of the show? Uh, Josh, Rachel, and Grunwald. And who are Josh and Rachel? Uh, my co-hosts. Oh, yeah, but I mean, who are they? <laughs> uh, they're good people. I've worked with Rachel for, I don't know, 25 years now, and I've worked with Josh for the last three years. And Do uh, you have country competition in Detroit? Uh, no. We, you're, the, you're the big dogs? We're the big dogs, yeah. Got uh, nominated and inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Do so that, that was a huge thing for my career. And, Do you uh, know that, Andrea? He's yeah. in the Hall of Fame. I'm not yeah. in any Hall of Halls of Fame. He's you're in, the you're of in Fame. my Hall of Fame, Steve. I was just going to say, yeah. you're in a couple Halls of Fame. I went to Cooperstown once. Does that count? You went to the comedy one. Uh, You're in the Steve. For all the years we've worked together, yes. If I could put you in any Hall of Fame, yes. it would be the Unemployment Hall of Fame. Ah, oh, thanks. There you go. Yeah. Thanks. What a sweet, sweet gesture. <laughs> uh, this program called Ignite. I want you to know about it because uh, people making a change and trying to change things uh, in a positive way. That's something that's vitally important. It's one of the walking orders I have for everybody that's involved with this show. And uh, Sheriff Chris Swanson who is foolish enough to be working uh, with uh, Grunwald as well, uh, is here, and we're going to meet him and talk about it in just a second. Six. You know, when I came back to the radio, Andre, 335 shows ago, one of the things I said is, if we can do something positive and try to spin things a little more positive than they are in life, then we're not getting our job done. Mm -hmm. I know you feel the same way. I do. So when my old pal Grunwald told me about uh, Sheriff Chris Swanson from uh, Genesee County, I said, well, i got to know more, especially about this program, Ignite. Uh, Sheriff, good morning. Morning. Thanks Legend. for coming over. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you being here. Sheriff, back me up on this, Andrea. Sheriff looks like he's about 35. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a 25-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And a 21-year-old son? 23. 25 and 23. Yes, sir. 
Grunwald, what's in the water in Michigan? How's that even possible? Uh, what kind of joke is that? I, Coming I, from Flint. Uh, <laughs> careful, careful. Careful, Steve. I mean, this didn't even take, I know you're that a stand-up, was, but that actually, was quick. That was an accident. That was quick. That was an accident, because actually that wouldn't help you. Cheers. Uh, but Flint is the biggest city in your county. It is, yes. And um, obviously you have a lot of challenges, just like any uh, right? county sheriff does. But part of this is this program Ignite. So let me back up for just a second. There was a woman here. Uh, not so many years ago, named Laura Caldwell, who is a lawyer and a college professor. And she wanted to do something for um, inmates who were wrongly convicted and got out of school or got out of jail. And she was uh, she was teaching at Loyola and she put together this program to help get them started because her point to me was an education to me and certainly something that you know, when you turn somebody loose, and I'm not just talking about wrongfully convicted, they're going back in the street with what they brought in in a lot of cases, there's not a family to greet them. There's nobody out there to do it. There's no job program necessarily. And what you're trying to do with Ignite is to take folks who have done their time and, uh, and, and shown that they can be good citizens and help them out, send them out, and make them uh, productive members of society. I think it's really important. We're doing it. We're changing culture. I, I even moved it beyond a program. It's not a program where you plug and play. It's a culture change. He was race relations, community relations. And when you educate somebody, you do exactly what you just said. You turn them back to where they came from better than turning them back and asking them never to come here. You know, don't repeat. Don't, no, don't reoffend. Don't re-addict. And you give people education and value, man, I've seen it. We've been doing it three and a half years. It's, it's the national standard in jails in America. And, and Grunwald, you are one of the best program facilitators I've ever seen. You had to facilitate me. But in the process of doing all this, what have you learned? I, I met the sheriff you know, a few years after the incident with George, George Floyd. Right. And, and by the way, you made national news then because you went out and said, let's walk. Right. It was the, again, it was the right thing to do at the right time. And it made sense. That's why I'm a different elected official than you probably have ever met. Yeah, certainly. So I, I believe in the sheriff and I believe what he's doing. And I, I think this country needs more people like that and we need to help people and instead of, you know, spreading hate and putting people down and and we need to unify each other. Well, you make the world better when you help somebody else out. And, and we got to get through some of the myths and some of the BS about folks that have been in prison and are coming out and help them restart their lives because it's good for all the rest of us. You know, a guy you know here, Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart, who was going to join us today and he's a little under the weather. But um, he fights one of the biggest battles there is in navigating the politics of Cook County and doing the right thing and he famously on 60 Minutes said, this isn't a prison, this is a mental hospital because our guys are being asked to do so many different things. That's right. So let's knock down a few myths here. That's right. If somebody's been in prison and they're in the Ignite program and they're in this culture change that you talk about, what are you doing to work with them and how are you changing things? Can I back up by explaining there's a difference between jails and prisons? Yeah, go ahead. Everybody in prison comes from a jail, but not everybody in jail goes to prison. Sheriffs well, run distinction. jails. And people that come into jail... In America, and there's 3,084 sheriffs in America, nine out of 10 of those people are addicted or co-addicted. Six out of 10 are diagnosed mentally ill, and half of them cannot read a menu. And then we ask them, whenever their stay is, to go back into the street, because only 10% of those folks go to prison. Nine out of 10 folks go back into the streets where they came from. And in jails, just like the sheriff said, we're housing people beyond the year because jails are there to be sentenced to a year. But 98% of our population are people just waiting for their court cases to be uh, concluded. These people are in there. I got folks that are in my jail for seven years right now. That, just waiting God. to get their day. Just waiting to get in. And when you take the addictions and the mental health and you crash it all together and their lives on the outside are going to pieces, what do you do with them on the inside? Do you either destroy them or do you build them? And that's what Ignite is. And if you turn the 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 jails into just babysitting in a holding cell where you're not doing anything with them, you turn them back out, a human behavior is going to be, well, I'm going to go to the only thing I know. No wonder the recidivism rate would be so high. Do you know in America, 80 million people have done at least one day incarcerated? Your How many? Right, 80 million in this country, and that's a stat from the nation outside and stay, come out, stay out. The returning citizen groups in America will testify that that many people have done at least one day incarcerated. Your listeners, I guarantee, have, can, can understand what that feels like when their freedom's taken away because of a bad decision. Yeah. As a sheriff, I think there's nothing a sheriff can't do. Honestly, there's no level of politics a sheriff can I do because we are elected by the people. 
given police powers to solve problems in crisis. And I don't know of another elected office that does that. So when I became the sheriff just uh, five years ago, I've been on the job since I was 18. I said, I'm going to use this platform for good. I'm going to use it to influence and to change. One of things is jails in America from incarceration to education. And that's what we're doing. We've got the stats to show it. How do you get in? How does one get into the Ignite program or learn about it or find out how they enter it? Well, I'm going to answer it two ways. Number one, our entire jail is Ignite. Okay. It's a culture. We've transformed the entire way of our staff and how the inmates are processed from the time they are booked. 100% we, buy-in? Now, it depends on what I you mean, ask. with your staff. The 100% buy-in is because the sheriff said this is what we do. Well, right, right. And you, I say you, that you, because... You make not, the rule because you have right. to make the rule. But, but I don't when you say have staff, you're not going to have somebody on staff who doesn't get what the purpose Correct. is of being there. Right. Whether they're being voluntold or they love it, we have both. And I'm going to tell you, it's a transition. What we've done, I've got returning citizens that did murder. 28 years, 12 years that are on full-time staff now. I don't do that for the shock value. I do it because they were transformed decades ago and they are ambassadors to get this rolling and to talk to people that i can't talk to and when the staff sees that change and then we have the ba- the, dac- the, uh, the data to back it up 97 percent reduction of violence in the jail i haven't had a single use of force lawsuit in the jail in five years wow. you have relations wow. on the street between white and black community and the jail our officers are safer on the street you know we're the biggest agency in all of mid michigan and when you see that transformation, you try to back it up. And you know what it is? You treat people like humans, not as incarcerated, inhumane people that have no dignity. That's what jails in America, unfortunately, have seen. We've done this since 1836. And we've, we've done the same cycle over and over. You know, come to jail. We did it hard. Go back. Don't ever come here again. And we just kick them out at 1201. That does not work. Ignite is now in 15 states. We're in 20 states coming in 2024. Big, big counties like Charlotte, North Carolina, Mecklenburg. Our first one was Minneapolis, Minnesota. That when you talked about, you know, Sheriff Hutchinson at the time, Hennepin County, he was the first one to come up to me and said two and a half years ago, we need Ignite. Right. And when you go to school five days a week, two hours a day in a jail, and you give them trades, you give them GEDs, diplomas, we have barber colleges, we learn them, uh, we teach them, uh, you know, how, how to be financially fit and how to eat well. We teach them how to speak French. You know, we teach them anything that they've always wanted. They're clean, they're sober, they're safe. It's a fabulous environment. We've done out of a quarter of a million training hours just in our jail, and we have graduations. And the next one is next week, the ninth, our 25th commencement. Wow. That doesn't that doesn't come free. Where's the money coming from? It is free. I'm going to tell you. No, but I'm saying you got to figure out a way to fund it. Right. You know what it is? It's just changing. Just like in radio, if you change your platform, you don't need more equipment. You just change your platform. All I did is change the philosophy of jail. I said, hey, we are not just going to house people. We're going to. Yeah, but I, I think you're being modest because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying these things come with a, a true hard mathematical cost that you have to navigate. Yeah. So have you got a lot of volunteer buy-in and the businesses and the community? See, how are you managing that? I told you off air, Steve, that you're going to be encouraged by the hope that I bring because good politicians and good elected officials do with what they have and they do it well. The county gives me $32 million to do my job and I've been able to do it without asking for a single dime for two and a half years of Ignite because I didn't want to say, give me money and I'll do good. I just did it, got the results and said, now you see what we're doing? And it's been funded now two and a half years later by the federal government. But it's not about, you don't need the money to do this. It's changing the way you do your daily operations. So we already had people coming in to teach GED and diplomas. So we added people to come in, in your point, to volunteer to say, okay, how do we bring in teachers that are going to teach financial fitness? How do we bring in Chromebooks to teach online courses into the tune of 400 different choices? I still, listen, Grunwald, you're not wrong about this guy. I still think you're being a little bit modest because you're the closest thing to a preacher I've seen in a long time. Literally, I was going to say, is this preacher, show still pre- uh, I'm preacher back. time for the primary? Uh, Wait. Preacher with a, <laughs> so preacher with a badge. We'll come back. You're going to learn more about the, the good sheriff and uh, get more from Grunwald here as well because I know you're a big part of uh, strategizing how things are getting done as well. Um, and it's funny, Ro Khan, who I know you know a little bit, is actually a full-time member of Tom Dart's staff and is a Cook County Sheriff's deputy here. So in his second career, um, I will not be taking that path afterwards no, because I, I won't be accepted. And I'll I, deputize you right now. <laughs> don't you, don't <laughs> don't you point you? your finger at me. <laughs> in 2024, on the Steve Cochran Show, I'm going to bring you as many great people as possible. And certainly you're meeting one today. Well, two. I mean, I can throw Grunwald <laughs> well, in, yeah. right? No, don't, don't do that. I'm going to re-meet true, him, Steve. Grunwald. It's true. 
Sheriff Chris Swanson's here, uh, Genesee County, just north of Detroit, including Flint and the surrounding area. And in that county, uh, the Ignite program has been picked up, I know, by the National Sheriff's Association. But off the air a second ago, we are talking about something that's important. We live in a time of judgment like no other time in my life where people go instantaneously because they saw a post or they see you or they just go, well, you were that, you're this. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's never taken a walk in somebody's shoes has an image of what an inmate is. Well, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to end up in jail, don't do the crime. I'm not excusing crime, but people get in a bad way for a million different reasons, and you see them every day. When you go into your, when you go into work, when you go to jail, when you go to work, and you meet folks, you can tell what they need fairly quickly. How do you get by their wall that's up that you're the sheriff, and why would I trust you? You're the guy that put me in here. Action, baby. Action. People don't want to hear words anymore. And when you have somebody who looks like me in a uniform like me that took a man's life in broad daylight in 2020, there's a big obstacle to overcome. So how am I going to convince somebody that has been, you know, been traumatized? I'm talking anybody, not even just a color, by somebody from the police profession. And that is what my mission was, is to change the perception, not defund the police police evolution. Let's change the way police evolve. We are the ones in control to make that change. I say people love the folks in law enforcement. We just got to give them a reason to do it every single day. And that means all of us. And is that every- then, it's not defund, is that refund? And I don't mean give it back. I mean refund as and put the money in the places where it's going to make the right difference. Listen, I said this on every platform in 2020, get the people out of my way in my uniform that are discrediting the good work that's being done every single day. Yeah, because you guys got to police your own. Absolutely. And 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 I I've, I've, I've fired nine people in 2023. I discipline my people. I try to train the people out. And if they don't work, then we get them out. They're not part of us. And when people see those actions, but they see for the right reasons, I'm not doing it for a, a title. I'm not doing it for a, you know, a headline. If people aren't doing the right thing, they need to go. But to your point, what people see to get over those obstacles is time and distance. They need to see that if you're real, which is my number one critique, anybody who meets me that walks away, they'll talk to people that know me and say, is he always like that? <laughs> and that is true because I look at it as my actions are what yeah, yeah, yeah. are going to define who I am. And I say that through Well, it's results. rinse and repeat, right? Mm-hmm. What's you, that? It's rinse and repeat. Yeah, if you're going to be re- this guy today, you better be this guy tomorrow. And listen, guilty as charged, you know, growing up in the business, you know, I'm third generation law enforcement. My dad and my grandpa were both Detroit police. So I grew up, even during the riots in 2020, my dad was in the 67 riots. My grandpa was in the 45 riots. That's exactly what I was trained to do, but we chose a different path on May 30th, 2020. We chose not to clash, but I took my helmet off and I said, what do you need? I asked the question, people that that are closest to the problem, remember this, always have the solution. Mm -hmm. You want to know how to fix something? Go ask the person who's got the problem. And everybody, by the sound of my voice, can understand what a second chance means because we've all been given one. It may not be something that caused you to get locked up. But we've all been given a second opportunity. And when you tap into those emotions and the hearts of those people and say, okay, since we're all talking the same language, regardless of what we look like, where we live, how we believe, what if we walked in concert with each other for the good of others? What if we fought instead of against each other for common ground where you didn't get what you want, you didn't get what you want, but you got more than what you had? And people respect that. They respond to that. But you got to keep going. This isn't a one and done. Wouldn't it be a great, great thing in 2024 if we all got the message that some of the greatest positivity could come out of a prison as opposed to the negativity of what's happening. going into yeah. a prison? Andrea, you know more cops than any of us. Yeah. This is inspiring just to First listen to. First thing I said is how do we bring Ignite or, or yeah. some program similar to this to the state of Illinois, Cook County specifically, Chicago, but of course the entire there's state no of other, Illinois. There's no other education model in jails in America that can top ignite. It's a culture change. Well, and you're your not point, facing any pushback on that, right? I mean, no. everybody's buying into it. I mean, you got the template already set. And here's the great thing. It's all about the messaging. You know, I have not written a single letter to a judge. I don't advocate for sentencing. It's not about truth and sentencing. It's about while they're in jail, how do you want me to return your neighbor? Right. And we do things to make it more constructive because guess what? If you come into the Genesee County Jail or any of the 15 jails across America and the 20 in the hopper and you are addicted and you have no education, you have no job, but you come in and you learn how to weld and then we link you up with 
the Department of Labor to get a apprenticeship in, the, in a trade, and you're making $65 an hour, and you don't ever come to jail, that's what's called problem-solving policing. Don't keep treating the symptoms. Fix the problem. If some guy or some person gets arrested for the same domestic, why does that keep happening? Go fix the problem. You don't have to arrest them anymore. And guess and what? It, then they become part of the society, and they're paying taxes, and they become part of the solution. Wins. Everybody wins. Gronwald, nobody's better at raising money than you, including all the money you've raised from my wallet over the years. <laughs> Um, and uh, you uh, need to spell out what this Christmas spectacular thing is when we come back from the break. And also, Sheriff, I want you to talk about us together, another piece of the program. We also want to tell people, and Grunwald, jump in on this. you got Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies all over listening, and a lot of those folks listen every morning here. What do you want to say to them? Because I assume you'd be happy to take their money to help. Well, I, I, I really think the next couple of things that we're going to talk about it changes people's lives, and it's such a good feeling to get involved. And once you hear about this, you're going to want to be involved. It's crazy, Steve. You're going to love it. I'm telling you, what you're doing, it's nothing short of David Copperfield here. Um, so maybe you're a magician. Maybe yeah. that's your secret. Uh, but, Andre, if you could, put, you could have a piece of this instituted with the Chicago Police Department where there's a morale issue that is completely understandable that CPD or everything CPD has gone through. Right. Absolutely. And if we could see, you know, because of this, a dip in crime, I think every, that's all anybody wants right this, now. We have those stats. Street. It's happening. It takes time, but I'm telling you, it works. I got the data, Harvard, Brown University, Michigan have all done the stat, the studies. They see the economic benefit one day in ignite per inmate saves the community over $3,000 because they don't reoffend, they aren't building out and, and destroying people's homes and lives. I'm telling you, that it is. You're going to think one day, what was it like without ignite in jails in America? Mark my cool. words. The first church of Sheriff Chris Swanson yeah. is <laughs> Genesee County, Michigan, but he wants to spread it everywhere, and so does Grumwald. I'm glad you guys are here. Joining us in the studio, one of the most inspirational guys you're ever going to want to meet, and his his uh, boy wonder. Um, Your new title. Sheriff Chris Swanson and uh, Grunwald, radio legend in Detroit. It's Deputy Stephen Grunwald. I'm sorry, Deputy (laughs) Stephen Grunwald. Yes. Um, And we are talking about the Ignite program and all the initiatives going on, but in specifics, the Ignite Ignite program. Yeah, it can work in Chicago, wherever you're listening around the country right now. It can work everywhere. And it clearly is. Um, So Grunwald, for these corporation heads, these white-collar folks that are listening who are moved, inspired... Want to know more? Maybe want to donate to the program? What do they do? Well, uh, they can get a hold of the uh, Genesee County Sheriff's Office, and any of the wonderful people that work there would be happy to put you through to the right person. That can would we be, donate online? That would be I. That would be I. Is mm-hmm. there a place online? You no, know, that's where Us United comes in. You know, I, I'm still government. And, uh, you know, a oh, leader of a government tape. agency red is tape. objective. I know yeah. you just you hate to hear red that, but tape. I'm a different cat. And, uh, you know, that's why we created Us United, which is the... Well, I'm the, serious, though. If people want to give you money, what do they do? Call Usunited.org. Usunited.org. That's right. Org. That's All right. the connection is right there. Yeah, because that we'll use that in order to fund these things that government... Because I work in the same environment that you work here in Cook County with the same frustrations. The key is, how do you get around it? You know, how do you, how do you push through it? You, you could just give up and say it's not going to happen because the system doesn't allow me, or you break the system up, and that's what we're doing. Andrea? Yeah, that's what I was. So we were talking off the air. I said, so with regard to Cook County, you know, here, a lot of people, you know, feel victimized or think that there's no consequences for all these actions. You know, we've had spike in carjackings. We've had a spike in uh, domestic retail theft, whatever it might be. And people are saying, well, what about the consequences? Yeah. I tell you what, I can't solve everything. But what I can do is work with somebody like Sheriff Dart, who has a heart to make a change. And that's what we're doing. And if he was here... You would see our co-labor mindset uh, would give people that inspiration that it it doesn't have to get worse. It can get better, but it's going to take people to stand up and say, that's it. We're going to do it. Not a Republican, not Democrat. I'm a party, but policy over party, people over policy. That's the mindset you got to have. And uh, And, and but but if I could extrapolate on your question, Andrea, um, there is a bias that comes from the public, too. And if the public says, why are we doing this for inmates? When we have a crime problem like we have here, why the big picture we've laid out, but explain your take on this. Well, I became a licensed paramedic when I was 20. I saw my first violent death when I was 18. I've seen a lot of death over 30 years. And when you're a medic, and I'm still a licensed medic and a cop, 
you have an algorithm to get to the final result, and that is save someone's life. When you go to a trauma scene and there's multiple injuries, you have to triage what is going to give them the best chance of survival. I can't fix everything, but I'm going to go to where I think the biggest bleed is. Once I get that taken care of, then I'll go to the other ones. So I know there's a lot of issues with law enforcement, a lot of issues with government, a lot of issues with the trust of government. I can't fix all that. But what I can fix is what Chris can do. That's what we're doing right here. There's not a single answer to any of the questions, any of the concerns. I can't fix Cook County. But I can say if I have somebody in that county or Hennepin or Charlotte and Mecklenburg or in Fargo, North Dakota, or my buddy's Sheriff Skinner in Dallas, Texas, a Republican cowboy hat wearing sheriff who has Ignite, then we can together now make that change. And that's what I'm seeing. There's a new generation of elected officials coming. I promise you this. And I think when you have more of us that stand up, it's going to inspire more to get involved in these other smaller areas and statewide areas and federal areas. And we're going to change political culture. I've seen in the jail. I've seen in policing. We're going to do it in the politics. Yeah, making incarceration a positive. Grunwald, this Christmas spectacular. What happens? Uh, I'm going to let the sheriff explain that. It's, I've never it's, seen you give up a microphone uh, when I give you know, an opportunity. I, I, Is I'm, it because he's sort of your boss? No, in this it's, case? N- it's not that because, uh, you know, he can say it best. And I'm here because I believe in him. I, I brought him here. I understand. Uh, you know, to, to, to spread the good word. And I, I believe in him. And that's why I work for him as a deputy part time because I think this is so important. And it's changing lives. And I see it every day. Every day. Every day. All right. Christmas spectacular. Disclaimer, what he's not going to use county funds to get to pay here. No. Right. I'm <laughs> not being paid. I'm not Sorry. being paid. Yeah. No. I just want you to know that. No. No. He's I'm giving up a day of show business Listen, man, I'd rather here. take 100 friends and $100,000, and Grunwald's one of those guys. You can make things happen with relationships. That's what politics is. It always blows my mind when people will say, you know, I'm not a politician. Listen, if you're in business, if you talk to a human, yep, you're you in are. politics. You are. You may not be elected, but politics and good politics is just good relationships, and that's Grunwald. So... On that day of May 30th, 2020, when we chose a different path in rioting, and there was 40 protests that summer in Flint, just coming out of a water crisis, poverty, high crime, there was a demand to do more, which we talked about Ignite. Yeah. But the other thing was, what can we do to build relationships? And most people called 911 where their lives are blown up. And so what we wanted to do is change that interaction. So on the second Saturday of December, for now four years, I gather thousands and thousands of dollars of, in this case, three quarters of a million this year. And uh, we get product and we pack boxes, 250 boxes. And I have the community choose and nominate people, whether it's financial needs or they're fighting cancer, they become a cancer survivor. Remember, they, uh, we have human trafficking victims that we go to. And I deployed teams, and this team, it was 14 of them this year. And all of them are led by law enforcement, my agency, police cars, uniforms, and people from the community that wouldn't normally go to those neighborhoods. So you have white folks going to black communities, black folks going to white communities, and law enforcement all mixed together, knocking on the door, ding dong, you've been chosen to be blessed for the spectacular. Here's in this box, two to $300 worth of good, good products, not junk. Good products everybody can use. Kroger gets involved, a number of people. And what you don't use, you get to go give to somebody else. That's unity. That's power. That's unity. That's what we call becoming that force multiplier. And at the door, we don't even stop there, Andre. We say, what else are your needs? We're putting roofs on people's houses, ramps in people's. We're paying off cars. We're putting tires. We do drum sets for kids that have no ability to get a drum set. I played the drums for this kid just last week because I love the drums. I play the drums. He didn't have a drum set, but that's what he wanted. He was seven years old. They live in a trailer. And, you know, it's those moments that sear in the minds and the hearts of people that you can have hope in government, law enforcement, white folks, black folks, rich folks, poor folks. I love that. That's I absolutely love Christmas that. You, spectacular. You said human trafficking, too. You've been at the oh, – yeah. your, your department, your community has right. been at the forefront in battling this horrendous, horrific since 2018, program since yes. 2018. Talk, talk about that. So that's called Ghost. I encourage you to Google it. I started from doing international experience in uh, Haiti and Mexico. Uh, we do under car operations. Man, when, when did you sleep last? I know it, brother. Yeah. I know it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just getting started. I, I, I'm afraid that this show's going to end sooner than I want it to. Yeah, unfortunately it is, but go ahead. <laughs> but Ghost, it was birthed out of that because I uh, saw how much human trafficking and the victimization were in other countries. I knew it was happening here. At the time, I wasn't the sheriff. I became one the next year. I said, we're going to start a concept team that does the proactive 
finding of these predators. And so we modeled that international experience I had uh, in Haiti. And uh, in 2018, we did our first operation, arrested six predators in one operation. And since then, we've arrested over 200 predators. We have done operations in 56 counties out of the 83 in Michigan, seven states throughout the nation. Ghost is the national standard on human trafficking enforcement. Mm -hmm. It's the brand of operating, but it gets better. We've never lost a case since 2018. Wow. That's amazing. We have a 100% conviction That's rate. Amazing. That's amazing. We awesome. do it right. We don't blast people that get arrested. We look at every case individual. Some go to prison. Some get rehabilitated. Some get accountable. But everybody gets caught. And our chatters, our decoys are the very best. So I created a ghost playbook for law enforcement that I offer to every police agency throughout the, the country. And we partner with them. So we have operations in two weeks going to Alabama. We're going to California in uh, three weeks. So I, I, as I said, sheriffs can do anything. So I link up with other sheriffs and we give them that playbook. We send my staff there. I go teach them and then they take it from there and they continue because human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the country Mm -hmm. and in the world behind drug trafficking. And uh, it's something that everybody can, can, uh, can be a victim of. There's, there are no boundaries. It's happening right here. It's Um, amazing what you've done. We barely scratched the surface, and I still feel like I owe him a giant amen. Will you come back? One hundred percent. Yes. Okay. I don't want to leave. I just I, I, I'm mutually stunned by the fact that you somehow have Grunwald mesmerized, where yeah. I couldn't figure out that <laughs> yeah. formula for years. And Can I, never, I tell you? And he's so I gotta quiet. say this. Grunwald was the only reason why Jelly Roll came to the jail on December fifth last year and did the first yeah. Michigan concert in the jail. Since 1836, in any jail in any county in, in Michigan. That's Johnny Cash stuff. That's it Johnny was. Cash That's since 1955. So cool. yeah. and, and Jelly signed the door frame because he's coming back. That was because of Steve and his heart for people. Oh, and Jelly Roll's the best. Great story, great testimony, great concert. He's wow. the best. Uh, for more information on what Sheriff Swanson and, and Deputy Grunwald yes. thank you, and all the good people in Genesee County are doing, wherever you're listening in the country, around the world, uh, please... Um, 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 check it out and uh, and dig more. You know what? You should be in the podcast live from my office. That's the next thing we'll do. I'm done. You do an interview with me on there. It's a um, pleasure to meet you guys. Yeah, really. well, I know I've known you, but it's like going to it's like going for to the church. record. I wanted to bring a in gift. Your new role. And Grunwald told me uh, Steve doesn't want any gifts. So next time I'm coming, I'm not listening to him. I'm bringing you both gifts. All right. Well, that's very nice. And then yes. show business if Grunwald told or you it's the not by county funds. And uh, just an FYI, <laughs> gifts. Uh, your brother like Mickey Steve is asking for a badge and a gun. <laughs> FYI. So <laughs> well, listen, both not good ideas. No, 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 good. no. no. Sheriff, God bless you. Appreciate You're an amazing you, man. You'll be back. Thank you for your platform today. Stay safe.